Hey everyone, welcome to this video and uh, today I wanted to share something interesting that I'm working on. So I'm working on making RAG uh, extremely fast by making it more memory efficient and making retrieval faster. And in order to do so, I'm using uh, binary quantization for embeddings. So what uh, binary quantization fundamentally means. So if you look at this uh, image over here, right? So we see that uh, uh, you have a floating point 32 vector. Right? And now in order to uh, binary quantize it, what you do is you convert uh, each of these uh, values in either a 1 or 0. Right? So depending on the sign, let's say we have uh, 0.23. So if it's positive, it's 1. Then we have minus 0 0.49. So if it's, if it's negative, then it's 0. Right? So this is fundamentally what uh, binary quantization does. Right? So now uh, there are two advantages of doing it. Right? The first one is you are able to, you know, uh, reduce a floating point 32 value to a single bit. So basically you are making uh, it 32 times memory efficient. So it would occupy 32 times less memory. So that is one thing. And uh, the second thing is like, once you have uh, these vectors in binary space, the comparison also becomes way faster, right? So instead of like doing a cosine similarity, you would just do a bitwise operation and see like how many bits are different, right? So that uh, distance calculation between embeddings also become much faster, right? So this just to uh, set the context of uh, what I'm working on. Uh, but uh, I wanted to make it more intuitive, right? So let's come to the more interesting part. So uh, I wanted to find a right intuition and uh, to explain like, uh, although we are, uh, we are losing a lot of information, but still like these binary uh, embeddings still hold uh, the important information, right? So the core information, it's still stored somewhere in them. And in order to like intuitively understand it, uh, we'll start with our first example, right? So I have this uh, Mona Lisa image, right? And I have loaded it, uh, it in its original form, which is in uh, RGB format, right? So you can see it here, right? And what if I try to, you know, apply binary thresholding to it, right? And then again, try to display it. Once you do that, you see that you lost a lot of information. However, you are still able to identify by looking the, at the same as that it is Mona Lisa, right? So the idea is, even though we lost some information, even though like we binary quantize this image, we are still able to identify that, okay, this is Mona Lisa, right? So let's try to apply same analogy to a vector embedding, right? So what we'll do is we'll define a random vector uh, of five and two dimension. And then we again, like uh, do binary quantization over it. And uh, the next thing that we do is like visualize them uh, one over other, right? So this is our original vector and this is our binary quantized vector. So you can see, we, uh, we still see some correspondence between the original uh, stuff and uh, the binary quantized vector. So the idea is to, you know, understand like, uh, or intuitively understand, like, although we are losing a lot of information, but still some core information is, uh, is preserved, right? And uh, this is what makes uh, binary quantization so effective. And uh, I'll be soon publishing a lighting AI studio wherein uh, we'll go in detail over it and we'll build a complete rag application and uh, you will see the capability of binary quantization like it can make your rag like extremely fast and in order to do so I'll be using uh, uh, a self-hosted quadrant vector database and quadrant is really good at it and uh, I have like really uh, enjoyed uh, working with it so yeah so I'll see you in another video and uh, stay tuned for a comprehensive tutorial coming next week. Thank you so much.